Balochistan, Pakistan's least developed province, sits on untold amounts of wealth. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of oil and mineral reserves. At the University of Balochistan, Dr. Abdul Salam has studied these natural resources for years. Really, our province in Balochistan is very rich in a variety of minerals like iron ore deposit, like copper deposit, like chromite deposit, like oil and gas and zinc. The whole Balochistan is really full of uh, these mineral resources. Uh, iron ore is very abundant in Dilband area, in Chagi area. Uh, more than 200 million ton iron is present in the Dilband area, more than seven, 70 million ton uh, iron is present in the Chagi area. Similarly, copper is quite uh, uh, in a huge amount is present in the Chagi area, like Sandak, like in the Kodik area. And it's also chromite in Muslim Bagh areas, uh, present in a huge quantity. Uh, just we need to explore these things to export these things. Uh, and lead zinc is present in the Spela area. Uh, oil and gas, you know, in the Edera Bukti area, in the, um, in the, same, in the, in the north Baloch, in Balochistan, it's quite, quite common. These are quite huge resources for Balochistan. Uh, gold is common, uh, they are associated with the copper. I mean, they are present in Chagi area, in the uh, Rikodik area, in the Sandak area. Baoju this keke. इस सरजमीन में बलोच सरजमीन में कोयला गैस पेट्रोल संग मरमर बहुत से ऐसे कीमती वसाइल हैं जो आम बलोच के खुशहाल जिंदगी के लिए बहुत ही ज्यादा है मगर उससे दूसरे استفاده कर रहे हैं दूसरे फायदा उठा रहे हैं आगाज हकूक बलोचिस्तान से इस सूबे में सामाजिक और اقتصادی तरक्की के एक ऐसे दौर का आगाज होगा जिसमें استحصال نہیں بلکہ انصاف ہوگا دہشت دہشت گردی نہیں بلکہ امن اور تحفظ ہوگا جہالت کا اندھیرا نہیں بلکہ علم کی روشنی ہوگی مایوسی نہیں بلکہ اعتماد ہوگا میں نہایت خلوص دل کے ساتھ آپ تمام کی طرف سے اس خواہش کا اظہار کر رہا ہوں کہ ہم ان तमाम सियासी कुवतों को साथ के साथ बातचीत करना चाहते हैं हम इस मौजूद जवान के तवसुत से उनको बातचीत की दावत देते हैं After decades of fighting the chieftains and the people of Balochistan were in no mood for dialogue they had heard the Pakistani government's words of reconciliation before and felt that nothing had ever come of them in 2010, the Pakistani government launched the Balochistan Rights Package, a program that promised schools, hospitals, roads, jobs, and financial support for the province. But on the streets of Balochistan, its people rejected the program, and the Baloch chieftains scoffed at the offer and refused to accept what they called the government's charity. This is a sort of a zakat that has been given for the Baloch. And most of the people who are sitting in the government, maybe it suits them to do some corruption. But as far as the Baloch is concerned, uh, uh, they don't want any zakat. They don't want charity. So provincial autonomy, development, these are, as one of your generals once said, peanuts for us. Slavery or high wages is not the substitute of independence. Suggesting to simpler people that we are ready to talk, where is there not? Concentration or armed struggle should be diverted to elsewhere. People giving up, people hoping, expecting. This is the port of the city of Gwadar in southwestern Balochistan. Sitting on the Arabian Sea, it's a place that went from a fishing village to a full-fledged port city within the last decade. 
Gwadar is the place from where Pakistan plans to announce itself as an international shipping hub and a conduit for oil and energy for the rest of the region. Small wonder then that the country's government is vigilant about security here. There's a healthy competition between Bandar Abbas and Gwadar and Karachi, Bin Qasim and Chabar. So why not? Business is healthy competition. You see, now it, it depends on us that we should bring peace, we should give security to the businessmen, and we should make this port a more viable, more marketable port than the others. You see, we should get into a competition. So if we, uh, from now on, st uh, start thinking that there would be an unhealthy competition, no, I don't believe in that. But to the Baloch people, Gwadar and its development are reminiscent of a mindset dating back to the British colonization of this region, one that built roads and railways to serve its armies. These are destructive as I understand it. This is to sort of occupy you, bring in outside population and exploit your resources. The people who are, uh, who are opposing uh, these kind of activities, they are in a very small number. But their voice can be heard everywhere. Majority of the people, they want development and progress. While that may be true, the people of Balochistan don't necessarily want that development and progress to come from the Pakistani government, who they say can't be trusted. That sentiment was clear during a recent visit to Gwadar by the Pakistani Prime Minister. As he held a cabinet session in the city to launch work at the port, residents from the area staged protests condemning the government and its plans for that port. This is a region that has seen decades of poverty and negligence. And people here feel that their needs can hardly be addressed by a prime ministerial visit or building a port. Power is when you have started here, you have started here. 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 But the people of Gawadar are now being a poor man. I have not studied here, but I have also studied here. Someone has done it, done it, done it. They are poor man. The people of Gawadar are all dead. They have worked hard for their children. They have studied their children. And they have studied their children. Who is it? While local residents here are concerned about their basic survival, local politicians are also worried. What's happening in Gwadar 
cuts to the heart of their political future. They fear the influx of outsiders into the area and the demographic change that will bring about. You are going to build the uh, mega projects like Gwada, and you are trying to make a big Karachi again in Balochistan. There is a problem with the Baloch because they have a big land with small population. We have only one guarantee which are asking from uh, this fed, uh, federation that the demographic change of the Baloch is a uh, major danger for the Baloch people. And my priority is to first <clears throat> to, to, to give employment to the locals, people who belong to this land, who are indigenous to this land. And if we uh, don't find uh, people of special skills, if they're not available here, so it is but national that we can get them from other places. You see, because, because we have to get the work going. And if the, in the local population we don't get a, a person with a particular skill, so I would never allow that work or that project to be stopped over there. No, I would, I would find. But this should be very clear. I've spoken to, to the Prime Minister, to the high ups in Islamabad, that people who would come from abroad, come from other places in Pakistan, they may buy property, uh, uh, they may indulge in uh, trade and commerce activities, but we will never allow outsiders to, to vote here. 